so the other day Lokohang was talking about how the dependent origination is we have to get the understanding piece piece by piece understanding from our practice and that and that this understanding comes up uh, like step by step so when I asked what is meant by that Lokoham said there is like a way or method which needs to be followed <coughs> starting with the purification of virtue then purification of mind and so on so when he was talking about that he said people here they have a certain level of morality or virtue but it's not become the visuddhi or the purification level or likewise for the purification of mind so the question was how do we get it to the purification level so Lokam said <coughs> we get it there by practicing the satipatthana so if you come from different places and just based on it stay here and with closed eyes have a gentle smile on your face maybe your hands in mudras on your knees and you think you are now achieving the purification or we should deliver then it's <coughs> It's uh, like, um, uh, like uh, something like blaming the Buddha's words, denigrating the Buddha's teachings. Mm. So if people think that this is the kind of visuddhi, then uh, this is something really bad, it's like denigrating the Buddha's teachings. So, people have not seen, touched uh, and understood the Satipatthana at all, and they just mistakenly take some way of calming the mind a little bit as, as something great. No, I'm not doing the Kira Hadarana. Even this body, Manali Kangatu, Dan, Sinning Eva, Eva the Deva, Ali Ramadi. So these days is. No, I don't know, look up, I didn't say anything. So. <coughs> People have this tendency to do, put up together some uh, method or something where their mind, one pointedness of mind increases a little bit, but then they talk and think about it in a great way how they have, be, they started achieving this great samadhi. Mm -hmm. So Vinita Amdu knows when he sits and 
helps with the meditation interviews if people from Venerable Sujiva come. Here Lokohamudru does not uh, have to talk with them too much because uh, and what is the reason is because they have already before practiced properly Satipatthana. There are some people like that. So then there are other people that come here, they are given the puti and stay for a number of months and uh, they just follow up their own ideas and uh, sometimes quite well develop their own wrong views and they don't get any uh, like impact from the coming and listening to the Dhamma talks at all and uh, after this uh, may sometimes few months time elapses they just uh, go go wherever they came from. So if they come again, they are uh, uh, one time they come again. So if they come again, they once once again I give them the facilities to. So I know, I know, come on. So if I turn again, I get to pray now. Oh. If I understand correctly, if, if they manage to learn the Satipatthana here and then they go, then it's very good. <coughs> but some people they go to the hall thinking how they are practicing and then they when they come for interviews they kind of waste our time and uh, then they happily go home. But nothing happened. This is kind of useless to talk about this, but some of these people, there is no impact of staying here in their mind. It's not that everybody is like that, but there are some people that, what Lokam basically says, if they stayed here or not, there is no change in them at all. So. So then people are told to know carefully and diligently all these activities and that is not happening. Especially in these people that uh, like nothing happens for them, though especially those people they don't follow that practice. Mm -hmm. Oh, <coughs> so if then if you or if you tell them to note what comes to the mind, th those are also not noted properly. So, whether it's the body or the mind, neither of those are really noted properly at all. Instead of that, they kind of stick to whatever they think, or I don't know, their notions or ideas, thinking that those are the real thing, they just follow those. Mm. So comes referring to this uh, dog duty ascetic sutta from Majjhima Nikaya where 
these two ascetics, one of them was following the practice of behaving like a dog and the other one as an ox. And they come to meet the Buddha and ask him and first he tells them, don't ask me, don't ask me. They come to ask him what's, what will be the result of their practice. And first the Buddha three times, two times tells them, don't ask me, but they like persist. So in the end the Buddha tells them and they ask, the dog one ask about the ox one and the other way around. So then the Buddha tells them, uh, if it goes well for them, they end up as the animals. If it goes bad, they end up in hell. So uh, then they start crying. Uh, they say, uh, they cry because for this long time, they thought they were following the right practice. And now they realize this whole, all the time, they thought what they were doing, thinking it was the right thing, was not the right thing. Mm. So that was like a cry, also because they realize how much effort and time they wasted doing that. So, anyway, so in order to achieve the Vesudhi or purification level of the virtue, mind, and so on, Lokam says that you have to get into the proper Satipatthana practice. That means taking the body, feelings or experiencing mind and mental phenomena as the root and using those four things as the kind of material for your practice, let's say. And from there you, you practice, then you start achieving those levels. Of course, Lokam says it's not that people here are not practicing that. Some of them are practicing at least to some extent, but then there are also others that are not practicing. Mm. Without the purification of virtue, you cannot really progress further. You absolutely need that. So then you are coming towards the purification of view which is preceded by the purification of mind. Hmm. Hmm.
you have to be established in the purification of virtue to come and practice the satipatthana in order to come to the purification of view so when you are at the level of purification of view you can say you have a really kind of samadhi to the right view that means you understand because at the level of when the view is being purified you get the understanding about uh, the nama rupa the mentality and material day uh, and uh, like conditioned like uh, causes and conditions and things like that so lokam says but none none of the people here they are none of the people here at that are at that level at all like nobody here so uh, lokam says like some people here if you ask them they they wouldn't know to say because they are not there uh, some people here even don't even they wouldn't know what position like bodily position they are in because they are like even like practice less than they have not reached that far and it's it's explaining more about these things is like uh, earth and sky you need it man in a net to be at it then me me will me nigga me adilla kaale me man kaale da te gana nigga ಮಂಗಾಳಿಗಾತಿಲ್ಲೀಲೆಯಾಗಿ so anyway so even if you don't uh, do or achieve anything too much at least when you are coming to the dhamma talks and listen to the buddha's teachings it's not bad you are still getting something but i think what comes there is something much more that you can get mm-hmm. so <clears throat> first when you come to a meditation center you observe some precepts mm-hmm. so this is the style i learned from burma so ಮೇಲೆಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ಟೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀಟ್ರೀ
So this is not to criticize anybody, this is just to give you idea what was those done those days. So uh, first the people they observe precepts and they get the instruction, explanation about the five aggregates and instruction to turn all their positions and daily activities into the practice. So then every day from the starting from the second day at two o'clock they have meditation interviews. Oh, then Bona, Mona, Medak Madina, Mono, 
instruction uh, but here we talk about the really good yogis that are truly managing to be established in the satipattanas then they get instruction uh, basically every day but it's like short instruction and uh, it's a build up on the practice uh, and small adjustments by the instruction every day happening but they have to be real genuine uh, genuinely uh, practicing yogis uh, that are established to are in the satipattana method so uh, in the first day they get instruction mostly about following the so this in the explanation basic explanation about the five aggregates the body is mentioned and uh, body being compounded of these four great elements uh, and one of the elements is vayu is the like wind or movement and vibrations element so we take that as the natural thing that is already there and start observing that so that means observing the rising and falling now some yogis they cannot observe it with like easily clearly so after a few days maybe 2 3 days the teacher uh, can come to a conclusion for this yogi this object is not suitable so then they are usually given observing the breath or some other object as is needed so as this uh, and together with observing the rising falling the yogis are told to uh, note all the bodily positions and bodily activities extremely diligently and carefully 
So as the yogis practice this, their, their minds automatically start getting uh, like peaceful and calm and settling because they are observing every, everything. So the mental activities start also calming down. So once this happened, you can say they are at the level of the purification of mind. So then as they continue uh, observing with this calm mind and noting, they start seeing and understanding that uh, the object that is observed is one thing and the uh, mind that knows about the object is another thing. And Likewise with the bodily activities that the intention is one thing, the body moving is another thing and the knowing mind about that is another thing. So things like that they start understanding and when that starts happening, with that comes clear understanding there is no real agent or person behind this. These are just like a bunch of happenings that are conditioning one another but there is no like entity or person behind this at all so that is the level where the purification of view is there really uh, mm -hmm. and i have probably left out about like one half of it so and lokam says now let's start from the beginning that was the end of the water mm -hmm. saying I am I was now telling you to do to get the Visuddhi the purification uh, I can anyway <coughs> get you, give you some explanation about meditation objects uh, and like adjustment adjustment of the meditation objects things like that because those are the things I know of and I have learned those things so but I was not asking you to get the purifications so within the Satipatthana you have <coughs> the four bases or establishments body, feelings, experiencing mind and phenomena. So this what is called contemplation of body or observing of the body. So there are these, these things that have to do with the observing of the body. So I can know if this is part of that or not and uh, clarify and adjust those things because I know about those. Okay. 
So the yogi does not need to know all of, about the Kaya Nupassana. Now the yogi is just given the instruction needed for his practice. So the part that the yogi needs to practice out of this observation of the body, that part is ex explained to the yogi. So one of the things there that is part of this observation of the body is the in and out breath. So there are some people that cannot uh, for some people, the in and out breathing does not work properly as a meditation object. Mm. Usually, it's even one day is enough to recognize that, like the yogi is given that instruction, but within one day. It is obvious that the yogi is struggling very much with the object. The yogi might even start getting headaches and uh, like it's really struggling. So then it's, the, the teacher can very easily recognize this object of in and out breathing is really not the proper one for this or suitable one for this yogi. So then if that does not work, then the Yogi is given the rising and falling of the abdomen. Mm. So if I understand correctly, some yogis have already practiced before and they have been practicing with the rising and falling. So what Lokam do it usually takes that in, into account. So if the, these people already practiced before rising and falling. He does not tell them to start now with in and out breathing. He just lets them continue the rising and falling from the very beginning. So Hmm. Hmm. So then whether, whether it's rising and falling or in and out breathing, it's connected to the same phenomenon and it's the this vayodhat or the wind element if you like. So anyway, so with some yogis that object works really nice and it is very clear and the mind easily stays with that object. So those yogis then use that same object uh, for, for like as their main object uh, without need to change it at all. Both in and out breathing and rising and falling are part of the observation of the body. Mm. So this is not, I am not, like Mokram says, he's not explaining this for, in order for you to start changing your, what you do. It is just to give you idea how those days the monks, oh sorry, so the yogis, were like instructed and led in meditation. Whether they were ordained people or lay people, they, 
method was the same. So together with observing this wind element, the yogis are asked to no, do knowingly everything. So whether they are like uh, eating, drinking, chewing, celebrating, tasting, swallowing, going here and there, looking here and there, uh, getting up, sitting down, lying down, all these bodily activities, do them knowingly, like noting. Mm -hmm. All these different bodily <coughs> activities are explained and it is explained how all of them are part of the practice and so they, they start, the yogis start from that. So then the yogis explain as they are sitting, let's say, watching the rising or the falling of the abdomen, they might get pain so or some like s strong experience so <clears throat> like that. So the instruction is for that moment, let go of the rising or falling and properly note, acknowledge the pain and and after acknowledging, noting the pain, go back to the rising falling. So likewise for the seen things, heard things, and so on. So like, and thoughts. So that's like thought happening, let go of the rising falling, note the thought and go back to the rising falling. There might be things from the past coming up in the mind. Or some things to do with so-called future might come up in the mind. So once they have been noted, they can take take the rising and falling and continue with observing and noting that. Then again, pain arises, so then you go, know the pain, and then go back to the rising. So it's a mind, so called running mind, then know, know that, and go back to the rising. Without letting go of anything. They're like not leaving anything out. No. Leaving anything out of your life. So that is how it was instructed. It takes about two days to get all this information properly, the, to get the instruction properly to the yogi takes usually about two days. Mm -hmm. So in two, three days, it's little by little being instructed and in two, three days, it starts working out. Because the yogis are really applying themselves in the meditation. Then it's possible to also adjust the meditation itself as is needed. Mm. The yogi talks with the teacher maybe every one or once every second day, and he starts getting some understanding out of the watching of the rising, falling and the other things, so, and the, that, the practice goes like that.